Hi everyone, I'm Rhonda from Acres of Clay. Today I'm thinking about spring. Yes, I know it's very cold outside. There's a lot of snow out there. And for a lot of you, you are like in this, I don't know what they called it, like a deep freeze here in the US. So for some of you, you're, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For others that are probably in, in summertime going into fall season, you have completely different weather than what we do here. But I'm thinking spring and with that comes um, gardening. I'm not gonna be starting my seeds just yet. I have started them in February. It is the middle part of February right now, and I have started them this early, but later regretted it because it was just too early, and my, my plants just got too big for the pots that they were in and for the area that I was growing them in. So anyways, I have all of my seeds that I will be planting in the upcoming um, garden season, 2021. I have everything but my seed potatoes and my onion starts, so I don't have those yet, but those I get right before I plant them. But I'm going to show you what I have purchased, what's new for uh, my garden, and yeah, what I plan to, what I plan to do. This is, let's see here, kind of the drawing that I make every year. I make up my lighting is probably really poor. Here, hold on. Is that any better? <laughs> okay, I turned the lamp on, but um, my drawing, this is my garden drawing that I, I usually draw out my garden every single spring. That way I know what I'm going to plant where and um, it just helps me remember what I have planted the year before. So this one here, this one here is actually 2020s. Um, and I have everything that I planted, um, where I planted it. And this isn't all of the gardens. This here, this is, uh, let's see, let's start over here. This is the main garden area. And then these are my garden beds. I don't know why I call it that, but that's what I do. And, um, this isn't all of the garden, this isn't all of the garden beds just because, well, I didn't draw it to size and... I ran out of paper so I have more garden space out here and over here now <laughs> so anyways that was 2020 so now I'm trying to draw up 2021s and just to see what I'm gonna plant where because what I like to do is I like to rotate everything um, for ex for example pepper plants they shouldn't be planted in the same spot two years in a row because that hinders their second year growth and most likely you won't get a good bumper pepper crop that the, the second year. Um, so I try to keep those um, and rotate them. Um, and sometimes if I have enough space, I'll wait two years for actually um, planting peppers in that same spot again. So if you have that much room for moving things around, that's always helpful. Um, same thing with tomatoes. I do it with everything. I try not to plant anything in the same spot two years in a row just to help with the soil maintenance. Even though I put um, fertilizer down and stuff, um, I still like to rotate. So I'm drawing that up and trying to figure out where I want to put stuff. I still haven't made up my mind and usually I don't make up my mind until I actually see what the spring is like because some gardens if it's too wet um, you can't get into that garden right away so maybe I want to plant my onions somewhere else when you when you're doing your earlier crops your peas your onions potatoes stuff like that a couple new things I'm going to be doing this year is sweet corn we haven't had room in the past in my garden area to do sweet corn we have done it in fields but um, you have to be careful with that because if you're not doing your own spraying, um, the chemicals will get onto your sweet corn and could potentially kill your sweet corn, which is not good. Not good at all. So we have made some room for sweet corn this year. Since we made our silage pile slab area um, and we had to put a driveway in, we were able to just kind of save an area by the driveway where we're going to plant the sweet corn. I plowed it up last fall and then we planted some rye in there as a cover cover crop 
and um, in the spring I'll plow it up again. I'll probably bring you along when I do that. And that will bring nitrogen and nutrients into um, that soil. I also um, put some manure in there as well. Sweet corn is on the list this year. This one here is peaches and cream. Um, that's a very popular variety for us here in Michigan. Um, you see it on road stands and all over. Um, but I bought, I think I got three different varieties. I have my seeds all around me. You can't see that at the moment. Maybe I'll show it to, show it to you at the end what I'm sitting in. But um, I also got this one. It's called Serendipity. Um, I don't know that I've ever had this one, but it's an 82 day and um, hopefully it's a good sweet corn because it was recommended by the store that I purchased them in. The, um, so, and then we, Kevin kind of wanted this one, I think, but we picked out a really early day corn. So the other two were 82 and 83 day. This is, this is a 62 day corn. What's this called? Early sun glow. And this one here should be ready. It should be ready in 62 days. So we we'll wait and see if that's true. Um, but yeah, they can't actually be planted by each other because I think of the cross pollination, but so I'm going to have to plant the early ones somewhere else. Another first, I think it's the first for me, um, since I've been married, but growing up, my grandparents always grew popcorn and I remember, um, I remember taking the corn once it dried out and then, um, going like this and getting the, the popcorn off of the, the, um, cob and it was always painful with my hands, but it was always fun. So I'm going to try this. This is a Dakota black and, uh, see how that grows. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted on that. So that's an, another new thing. The other last new thing, I think I'm not actually growing a lot of new stuff this year but I mean as far as plants go I'm I am doing different varieties of stuff but um, plants itself like corn this is my other one leeks uh, I have not grown leeks before and hopefully I have good success with these um, because I like to cook with leeks they're good in all kinds of different dishes so uh, we're gonna give that a try and see how they go. So for the most part, I buy my seeds from two different companies. A local company, which um, ha where is where I get a lot of my bulk seeds, more like uh, my beans. Like I can buy these in one pound um, bulk and they're pretty reasonable. Um, these ones are my jade beans and they are only $4.30 for a pound of them. If I get them online, I find that they, for a pound of seeds, it is quite a bit more pricey. The other company is um, here. Baker is Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, and I've been getting from them for a while. They seem to be a good company to work with. So, all right. So let me go on and show you what I'm planning on planting. Uh, this is going to be quick because I have a lot of seeds here and there's a lot like, oh goodness, I don't know about you guys, but I keep my seeds in like totes like this. I also have, oh yeah, this little thing. This is like a, almost like a, a lunch box. Um, and that's full of seeds also. A lot of my flowers and stuff are in here. So, um, I'm not. So I'm not going through my flower um, seeds. Not right now anyways. I have everything that I'm going to plant already picked out and laid out here. I plant quite a few different um, leafy greens and type things because um, I like them. <laughs> so the first one is going to be spinach. I have Swiss chard and I like the rainbow Swiss chard because I just think it's pretty. Um, and then I've got a gourmet blend. Now this is I have a whole bag of burpee seeds. What's this one? A burpee seed also. And this come from a viewer. Um, he sent me that I think last fall. And so I'm going to be um, 
I'm gonna be growing all of those seeds too. I'll show you what those are. But, so I have a gourmet blend. I have several different kales that I'm gonna be growing that I grow every year. Most of this isn't nothing new. Arugula, I like this, and some ruby red leaf lettuce, um, another spinach, and I have a scarlet kale, endive. I like endive, I think that's really pretty to grow. Um, and then I have just a lettuce. This is a collard green. And this one I already said, did I do this one? If not, here's another kale, Russian red. And then another kale, there's several kales here. And this is actually a new one that I've never planted, but if you can look at it, look at the size of those leaves. We'll see how well they do. I don't know how they're gonna taste, but we'll see how well those leaves grow. Then I have like some different cabbages, Chinese cabbage, I have cauliflower, just two other cabbages, I have a red and a green, and then this is a broccoli, and I don't have a regular broccoli, but I probably will plant just regular bro broccoli also. All right, the next one is peppers. So for pepper plants, um, if you've watched my videos in times past, I love growing pe peppers. Sweet peppers is my favorite to grow is because we like to eat them, um, pick them, eat them, cook with them, all kinds. Um, but this one's called Blot. As you can see, it's kind of a variegated orange, yellow, rusty color. And um, I'm excited to plant that one. But for all the other ones, I've already planted these. Um, so sweet red peppers. I have a Spanish mammoth that did phenomenal last year. The plants got huge and the peppers were huge also. So I'm gonna do that one again. I also did these mini bells last year and they were very prolific also. So I'll probably do that again. Uh, this one here, I don't know the name of it, but you can try to figure it out. Um, I'm gonna grow them again, but I didn't have good success with them last year, so I'm just gonna give them one more try, plant them somewhere else, and see if they can do a little better deal. I have a yellow pepper and another red, it's called King of the North. The yellow monsters, I'll probably do these again, even though they're not a long keeper, so they take a long time to ripen or turn yellow, but once they do, they actually don't keep very well for very long. So we'll just, we'll just see. <laughs> um, I don't know why I have this one in here, but maybe I'll plant this one. This is just a mix of bell peppers. Might as well, I guess. I also have Ozark Giants and chocolate beauty, banana peppers, and some other weird name one that I'll let you name. Um, so those are my peppers. I think that's all I'm gonna do this year. Um, I have a lot more varieties in my box below, but I'll probably not do all of those. I also have um, one of you, one of my viewers sent me hot peppers. So these are called Hawaiian chili peppers and they're supposed to be super hot. I'm excited to try these actually. Um, and this will be my hot pepper for the year. I probably will only plant this kind. Hopefully those grow good and uh, yeah, they'll put some heat into whatever I'm making. So I showed you the, I showed you the jade beans. I'm also going to be planting also got a new, a couple new varieties that I haven't ever tried. So I just wanted to try something different to, you know, I've stuck with jade beans for over 20 some years and I just like growing them, but I don't venture out from jade because jade's my favorite. They just are very prolific. They, they produce throughout the season up until it freezes. And yeah, so I've always planted jade, so. Um, this year, along with Jade, I'm going to do, these are called Lewis, and they're just another bean that I thought looked good, and we'll give it a try. Also going to do some pole beans, so these are Blue Lake pole beans. I don't know how the flavor and everything of these are going to taste. I think a lot of people do grow 
blue lake i think it's a popular variety but i uh, will see i wanted something that can grow up on a pole because i love to grow vertical so that was my option also i'm getting these they're called slenderettes and or slenderette and i'm hoping that these have good flavor as well that is a bush bean also got the red Chinese noodle beans that I'll be growing again and then I'll show you guys how I cook those because some of you have asked in times past. They're, they, they get very long and um, they're just called a noodle bean and or a yard long bean and they, they're very prolific as well and so I will show you um, some recipes uh, in the future of how I cook how I cook them as long as they do good you know. I have a few different varieties of peas. These ones here I grow, uh, I get by the pound also. This is just a sugar snap pea. And in uh, English, this is a shell pea. So I have a lot of those. But I also really, really like the Mongolian blossom. Mongolian blossom. These, um, they are very prolific and they grow upwards as well. They all need to be on a trellis, so. Those are the peas. The next thing I really like to grow is cucumbers. And I have a lot of different varieties of cucumbers that I like to plant. And I like to try something new every year as far as variety goes. Last year, my favorite one that I grew was called China Jade. These are like an English cucumber. They're so good. And they produced up until it froze also. Whereas my pickling cucumbers, they got blight really bad and it felt like they didn't produce very much at all. So uh, so I would definitely highly recommend Jade um, cucumbers. They just did really, really well. But um, I'm hoping this year when I move the cucumbers to a completely different location that I won't have the um, blight that I had last year so hopefully but I'm gonna be planting a Boston pickling cucumbers these are gonna be the cucumbers that I make pickles with relish out of stuff like that because we we like our pickles this is another pickling cucumber uh, I have a whole bunch of them actually so I'm gonna be trying them all Chicago pickling and then what else do I got here? Okay, so this is the main, this is my main one that I always get. This comes in a huge, you can see all the seeds in here. This is the one that I usually plant. Um, they're called SMR number 58. I don't know if you can see that, but um, I can get this. This is a four ounce bag of these cucumbers um, for $4.95. So I figured that's a pretty good deal. But while I was there picking these up, I saw this one, and it's called Pick a Bushel. And these say that they bear 10 to 20 medium green um, fruit. Um, they're a semi-bush plant. Anyways, so I thought these were really good, and I thought maybe, maybe I could try something else other than these every single year. And um, when I, they did have these, they, they had Pick a Bushel. Um, they had the pick a bushel in this size bag. These are four ounce bags and it was like $30, I think 30 or 40. And I was like, Oh, that's a little bit much. So, um, I decided to pick up just a couple of these packets. They were a dollar 10. We'll see how well they go. Maybe, maybe it'll be worth it next year if they are a good pickling, if they're very prolific and hearty. Um, maybe I will. Maybe I'll splurge and buy a big big bag of them next year. I don't know. We wait and see. Also, just have regular cucumbers um, that we like to eat. So, those are that. Moving right along, I've got squash, gourds, pumpkins. Um, again, this I planted last year and was happy with that. Um, I'll probably do these. These are sweet meat. That is a winter squash. The butternuts, we like butternut, and I have a blue Hubbard that um, I grew last year, and then they, I still actually have some of them. I was just looking at them in the garage, and I should cook one up for supper, but this is a red Hubbard. I'm going to do that one this year, just to 
a little different variety. Um, and then this one's called Jack of All Trades. It's a little pumpkin and winter luxury pie pumpkin. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a lot of melons as far as winter or watermelon and musk melon, um, cantaloupe type melons, just because it seems like um, by the time they are ready for us to eat, we have bought in watermelon from the store and we're kind of meloned out by the time the season's almost done. It just doesn't seem like I, and it doesn't seem like I ever have that great of production with watermelon. So just wait, I'll, I'll wait and see. I'll probably change my mind, but you know, you know how that is. Oh, I forgot. I gotta talk about my tomatoes. So newest, newest tomatoes for this year, mortgage lifter. I don't know why they name them these, but that's what I'm going to be planting. I think that's the, is that the only new one? Oh, no. Rebecca Allen is another one. And I got all these tomatoes from Baker Creek. So I also purchased a, a classic beef steak. Also going to do Amish paste again this year. Love Amish paste. Those are my favorite for a paste tomato. Oh, this one. Yeah, Hillbilly, Hillbilly Potato Leaf. This one is a variegated, um, variegated tomato. So that will be fun to watch grow. All the other ones I think I have already planted. The, I've got, I'm going to do the purple, purple Cherokee again. A yellow. Oh goodness, I'm spilling everywhere. Um, German Johnson, that was one of my favorite. Last year, Mushroom Basket did phenomenal. Um, German Pink, that was always makes a really nice large tomato. Abe Lincoln did good job last year. And the Ponderosa Pink did also. So I'm going to plant them all again. Um, I, so I usually plant the big beef steak type tomatoes and then the paste tomatoes those are usually the only ones I um, I grow I don't grow little salad tomatoes just because I I mainly can most of them or make salsa or you know stuff fresh like that so I just use big tomatoes and I think it's just easier that way all right let me wrap things up here real quick um, again we'll be doing zucchini and your summer squash, the yellow crooked neck. Well, this one's a straight neck. Also, I have some bleh, uh, radishes um, and parsnips. I'm gonna try parsnips again. Last year, my parsnips did not do good. So this year, I've got a different plan. Um, and then these are all different carrots that I'm gonna be planting, so carrots herbs here i've got cilantro cilantro um parsley um basil another parsley and rosemary so those are the herbs that i think i'm going to plant i also have dill but that seed is in a box it's somewhere else because i saved seeds last year so they're somewhere in my saved seeds bin all right so then that's all for I think that's about it. So then I have bunching onions. These, so these came from um, one of my viewers that graciously uh, sent me these and I was so thankful. Um, bunching onions. Uh, this is a porterhouse hybrid tomato. Couple different winter squashes. So this one's a mixed variety. That one I'm excited about. And then buttercup. We like those. And then this here is uh, Black Beauty um, Zucchini. So I've planted that before and I've had great success. So, and then, um, what is it? Spinach. So we'll try spinach also. I have spinach somewhere else, but I um, like spinach. So different varieties are awesome. All right, so that is basically everything. Whew, took me forever to do this. I also want to add that if you are planning on purchasing your seeds online, um, be sure that you do that quickly if you haven't already because there is a seed shortage is what they're calling it. 
Um, I don't think it's actually a seed shortage. I think it's more of a shipping issue and a demand issue. There's so many people out there that are wanting to get into gardening um, that they are uh, that the demand for orders has gone way high. I know that Baker Creek um, had closed down for uh, like a week or so and wasn't taking any orders. That way they could get caught up. But they're now they're reopened, I believe, and they're saying that shipping could take up to 30 days. So if your um, if your growing season starts in the next 30 days maybe 50 days. I would consider um, purchasing your seeds here shortly um, just because just because it could take up to 30 days to get it to you. Um, hopefully that's not the case for you, but just in case it is, I wanted to give you that heads up and make sure you have your seeds for when it warms up or for when you start planting them indoors. I'm not gonna be planting mine just yet. I'll probably wait for another month, month and a half, I don't know. So my video camera for whatever reason shut me off in the last bit, but I wanted to say um, thank you for watching. Also, if you've hung on and are still watching to the end of this video, Thank you. I appreciate it so much that you've made it to the end. I know I was a little bit long-winded with this video, but um, if you are still here, if you grow a garden or you are inspired to grow a garden, let me know in the comments below what is your favorite thing to grow or what do you grow the most of or what grows really good for you if you have any hints or tips or tricks. Let me know in the comments below. And I would love to hear from all of you. Um, that always brightens up my day. So thank you so much. And I hope you are having a very blessed day. We will catch you on the next video. All right, take care everyone.